Jojo Siwa reveals which LGBTQ plus stars inspired her to live as her true self. Plus, I talk to director Cullen Douglas about the heartwarming story behind his new documentary. And a trailer is finally here for the new Velma series. That's all coming up on Advocate Today. Hi there, welcome to Advocate Today. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist and happy LGBTQ History Month. Today, we celebrate stories that reflect our history, but also our bright futures. We begin with star Jojo Siwa, who's sharing which celebrities inspired her queer awakening. Siwa took to social media to participate in a trend where users tell a personal story to the beat of Super Freaky Girl by Nicki Minaj. She tells the story in three parts. In part one, Demi Lovato's Cool for Summer song got the ball rolling for Siwa. In part two, Jenna Dewan's Magic Mike performance on Lip Sync Battle piqued her curiosity. And in part three, Siwa confirmed she was into girls while on her first date with a man. That video is amazing, and it's up right now on Out.com. Turning to our main story, we could all use a feel-good story about now. The new documentary, Billy Flanagan, Happiest Man on Earth, is just that. From his career at Disney to biking 7,000 miles during the pandemic to deliver flanograms to friends, the life and work of Billy Flanagan truly embodies the human spirit. I spoke with director Cullen Douglas to share more about Billy, his impact, and what viewers can take away from the film. I would just love to start by asking you how you heard about Billy's story. I started to hear or rather see on Facebook. Um, I, over 20 years ago, I was a performer and a show director down at Walt Disney World. And I still have a lot of friends that are, are still cast members down there. And a couple of weeks into the pandemic, I started seeing on Facebook friends saying, hey, I got planogrammed, I got planogrammed. <laughs> and then I started writing back going, okay, what is a planogram and do I want one? <laughs> and that's when um, friends said, no, Billy Flanagan, he's been going around on his bike and delivering these socially distanced singing and dancing telegrams and, and we're calling them flanograms. Yeah. And I just thought it was, it was kind of an amazing thing. I had, you know, when I worked at Disney, like I said, over 20 years ago, the, the name Billy Flanagan was already legend back then. Uh, he just sort of epitomized what I think Walt Disney would want in his parks. He just, just this bigger, larger than life, accessible performer. Mm -hmm. And so I had already kind of been predisposed to what, you know, kind of magic Billy was capable of. But then seeing what he was doing when we were all locked down and kind of scared and not knowing what was going to be happening next, this small act of kindness that he was extending to folks just really kind of gave me hope. Yeah. And I thought, okay, there's something there. there. There's maybe a story to be told. I, I didn't realize at the time that there was an, a much bigger story, mm -hmm. um, which I was really excited to, to be able to tell. So this film, uh, it lifts up Billy and he's such a, you know, infectious personality, um, but he's, he's a human being and he's got stories. And, uh, you know, the closing song of the film kind of alludes to this, this idea of, of masking or sometimes putting on a face um, when there's other stuff going on down below. And I, I think, or, you know, inside, and I think, um, you know, we see that on social media and we, we don't always see what a person is going through. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about highlighting that aspect of Billy's life. It was a really interesting thing because in talking to Billy, it reminded me of the times as a performer where I've had to leave things, you know, in the wings and step out onto stage because the audience is expecting a great show. Um, you know, whether I was dealing with my son's cancer fight or anything, those, mm. you know, the show had to go on. And yet talking and discovering more about Billy, he had lived so much of his life denying who he was and in this internal turmoil. And yet out on stage, he was the man with a thousand watt smile. Yeah. But on the inside, he was really hurting because he couldn't be his true self. Mm -hmm. And and so it was a really hard, hard thing for him to navigate. But finally, when he was able to speak up and found his voice and uh, he felt empowered by the whole thing. And then my job as a filmmaker was simply just to listen 
and to get out of my way and his way and let him tell his story and, and try to let it, to give him the space to be able to do it without sensationalizing anything, without trying to create any sort of clickbait moment. It was just, here's a gentleman who has had a lot of things that he's had to deal with, and yet he's overcome them. And he's done it with this incredible selfless uh, power that he has. I mean, people talk about the fact that Billy's got his own special brand of pixie dust um, <laughs> that he shares with people. and and. When Billy realized that his story was going to be going out there, you know, because he's been a private person for so many years and didn't share any of his personal stories with his coworkers, he realized that this was the point, he was at the precipice, that he could help. He could perhaps, the film could perhaps reach someone like himself mm -hmm. who was 17 years old and feeling lost and disillusioned and if that could offer hope, it was sort of just a, a no-brainer for all of us. Um, and, and Billy allowed me to step in and, and try to tell his story the best I could. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. And I, I also, I want to dive a little deeper because part of the story uh, that you kind of touched on is his coming out later in life. And um, he was someone who endured bullying as a child and a lot of stereotyping throughout his life. And... I wonder if you could touch on the idea of holding grace for people who are on their own journey of self-identifying and coming out. It really was an interesting thing for Billy because he was so incredibly, and to this day is, is so incredibly dedicated to his family and has raised an incredible humans. They, they really have. They are all just versions of Billy and his ex-wife, Karen. Um, but again, the fact that it took Billy as long as it perhaps did, that's his journey. And, you know, there's, there's no space for me to make comment on the fact that, it, you know, perhaps I feel like it might have taken longer or he should have said something sooner or discovered it sooner. Billy's coming from a generation where he was not allowed to, to open up. He was not allowed to speak his truth. And it was just something that he had to continue to push down and push down until he almost started to believe the narrative himself. Mm -hmm. And it was finally, I think, that through the efforts of, of, of things like The Advocate and, and, and slowly folks that are within the marginalized community, slowly trying to be able to find footing and acceptance that it allowed Billy to kind of open up the door a little bit and say, you know what, I've, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff here and, and maybe I can I can share my truth. The, the thing that was really heartbreaking uh, for me was to see how it did really impact and hurt his family yeah. in so many ways, but in a wonderful way. And again, just getting out of my own way and letting the film do what it needed to do Billy was able to assemble his family, including his ex-wife, to watch the final cut of the film before I locked picture and, and added music. And they watched it together in Billy's home. Yeah. And Billy called me and, sorry, um, he said that the film was starting to heal his family and that they were able to talk about things that they had never done. And from that point on, I, I was like, you know what? Regardless of what happens with this film, if in me telling this man's story has brought healing for him and his his family, then I'm, I'm done, I'm good. Everything else is just sort of gravy from this point forward. I have no reason not to be the happiest man on earth. Thanks so much to Colin for stopping by and sharing part of Billy's story. Billy Flanagan, The Happiest Man on Earth, is available now on VOD. Lastly today, Velma has made headlines as of late with the confirmation that the character is a lesbian. With Mindy Kaling voicing Velma, the show dropped its first trailer at Comic-Con. Just days before, Velma's sexuality was confirmed in the movie Trick or Scooby-Doo.
In a statement on Instagram, Kaling said Velma will, quote, struggle to navigate the pitfalls of high school, her budding sexuality, and a serial killer intent on murdering every popular kid in town in the new series. I am so excited to watch Velma in this new form. The full trailer is up now on out.com. Pride.com is making history with its first digital cover featuring the stars of the original series, High School. The new streaming series is based on the best-selling memoir of the musicians Tegan and Sarah Quinn and was created by their friend, actor and director, Clea Duvall. The of the series are Rayleigh and seasoned Gilliland along with Kobe Smulders. Go to pride.com for the full feature article on this historic cover shoot and exclusive behind the scenes footage. That's all the time we have for this advocate today. For more content, open the Advocate channel streaming now on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and Android TV. You can also download our app on Android or Apple devices. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. I'll see you next time.